moment to chat with you guys today about uh, what's going to be the chain of events going on and introduce myself. I am Jen Bargell, Solution Consultant with the Air Force team, and I have my team members here, Eduardo and Kevin, and I'd like for them to introduce themselves. So, Eduardo. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Eduardo Coel. I'm a Solutions Consultant um, and su supporting the, the DOD, and I my focus area is the, the customer service management uh, workflows tool. Good morning, this is Kevin Adler. I work with Eduardo and Jen supporting the Air Force around customer service management workflows. Awesome, thank you so much guys. Um, today we're gonna be talking about customer service management and how that helps to manage and automate a body of work, so cases. Um, and just for your awareness, we are recording this call. Um, so if you want to review this again at a later time, we will share that with you if you would like. For today's agenda, we are gonna go over um, a quick snapshot um, in about five minutes of what ServiceNow really is and what that platform entails. And then we're gonna move on to the case management side. There will be a demo involved with this as well as some slides that Kevin and Eduardo will be speaking to. There's some use cases and next steps of how to go ahead and continue that conversation. And then we'll open up the last 10 minutes for Q&A. But one of the things with the Q&A is that at any point that you have a question, please utilize the bottom part of your screen that has a Q&A um, in there and we will be monitoring that as well. Some of those questions will elevate to the speaker and some of those will be able to answer. Um, and so just be on the lookout for those. And just so you all know, you are on mute automatically, so you are not able to speak. So just use that Q&A feature or even raise your hand. So we'll continue on. So what is ServiceNow? And ServiceNow is really an automation platform for digital workflows. And that's taking work from cradle to grave or beginning to end and connecting those nuances and pieces together to allow a seamless experience for your end user. So in the Air Force situation for our airmen. And so being able to deliver that so that it's on one platform. And what does that really mean to you? What that means is that everything is connected through the CMDB and having the ability to have one, your left hand talking to your right, essentially. And so it's one data model, one architecture, one platform. So having everything in one location or to be able to integrate in one location in order to be able to complete your level of work. And so the integrations is where ServiceNow really has its bread and butter. We've really cut our teeth on ITSM, so your IT work, work desk, but we've also branched out as we've developed over the last eight years, eight to 10 years, in being able to have those conversations and bridge those gaps where it's needed, specifically in the Air Force. And we also have a knowledge base in that service catalog where airmen are able to utilize and bring in their home experience to their work experience. So bringing in those series and Alexas and having those virtual agent conversations for that self-help that they're really driving for. And with that self-help comes the machine learning and AI, the ability to have that conversation and the computer to be learning what your process is going through that. We also have developer tools as well. So we have a no code, low code methodology, but we also have pro code as well for those that are in, in that realm. We also have, when we're talking about workflows, we're really talking about IT, employee, customer, and then the app engine. IT is all centered around your help desk, your operations, your business management, as well as your security operations. Your employee workflows are gonna include anything that's around that employee. So your HR, your training, um, anything that can relate to that employee. And then there's customer workflows and look at that as anyone that you're servicing outside of your employee environment. That's what we're gonna be honing in on today. And then we have our app engine. And as I mentioned before, the developer tools are there in that app engine in case any of those three workflows that come out of the box from ServiceNow 
don't fit your needs, there's an ability to create other workflows around that utilizing the app engine with the no code, low code, or pro code environment. And delivering great experiences for your airmen really stems around the ability to do work anywhere. That's via mobile, web, or conversational. I know that the Air Force is really using Microsoft Teams, and we are working with you guys in, to promote the work being done in a more effective way. And especially with the COVID in the current situation, being able to manage that in a reasonable way is the way that we're trying to help you guys move forward. There's also a web interface that we really focus a lot of that attention on instead of having to be driven just by one computer source. Now, we also know at ServiceNow that we are not the sole source of systems of record. And one of the things that we really love about ourselves is the ability to integrate with all of these other services in uh, communicated systems of record. So like USA Jobs, Oracle, Tanium, AWS, SAP, being able to communicate that information on one platform so that all of the information becomes single source of truth on that platform. So with that, we're going to go ahead and talk about those customer workflows today. And Kevin and Eduardo are really going to hone in on how they can help the Air Force in meeting the customer's needs. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass that off to Kevin. All right. Uh, Jen, I think I'm, I think you can hear me. Is that true? We can hear you and we can see your screen. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that nice introduction. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to have you on today's Tech Talk for the Air Force. So we're gonna um, dig deep into the customer workflows that Jen just referenced. And really when you look at the entire platform of ServiceNow, we will focus the time on this um, hour in the upper left, the uh, customer workflows and specifically the capabilities around case management. We find it's so valuable for the Air Force to have a tool set, set that works uh, fluidly throughout the organization, throughout the different segments of the Air Force, the different users, the different agencies that support the Air Force, and maybe even other agencies that I'm not even speaking of today. So throughout this conversation, we'll focus on case management. However, customer workflows really is um, part of the ServiceNow platform for service management, uh, supporting um, your, your customers throughout the life cycle of their engagement with the Air Force. The unique differentiators that customer workflows offers our customers, including the Air Force, is the ability to support complex case management. Not everything is an incident. Some of these requests that are, um, can be very complex, they can have a lot of variations, very st uh, different steps in the process of solving the case. And they might need to collect different assets or information as they travel through the life cycle of the case before it's closed and then archived. So case management allows the flexibility to receive and collect information and travel through the organization until that case is successfully closed. The way in which we do that is through our account contact data model, which it basically means it's a 360 view of the customer. That means certain customers have perhaps different entitlements, certain customers might be segmented, and certain customers might have different service level agreements depending on who or what or asking or they're asking for. So those are all supported through our co uh, co account contact data model from ServiceNow's customer workflows. The next unique differentiator, I think that really speaks volumes with a lot of our customers with case management is the direct integration of work orders from case management itself. So that in essence, if there's a requirement to do an investigation out in the field around a, a, a certain type of questionable activity, or if you need to dispatch or schedule um, a function of work, field service management is a, a extension of case management out in the field so that you can schedule, you can maintain inventory, you can correct things first time there or facilities, you can support facilities on first arrival and have a, a higher success rate and require less intervention of human capital. And then finally, the other um, unique differentiator that our customers really excel at using is 
our communities module. Basically, humanize the self-help experience and collect and share the tribal knowledge that so many of our customers have so that you can allow your customers in certain segments to share and ask questions and find out answers on their own and really help that peer uh, peer to peer experience with um, solving their own cases even before they create or raise it raise an issue. So the area that we actually are helping customers solve is really breaking down the silos and the systems of actions that so many of our customers throughout the, um, the Air Force and the Army and the, and the Navy, all of these customers have today. Jen mentioned that not all of the systems of record are serviced now. It absolutely makes sense to use the tools that work the best. But when you've got mission partners and vendors and you have agencies, all sending in their requests to the Air Force to, 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 to solve these different cases. How do you go about coordinating all of those uh, chains of commands and those silos to find the answer to the case and to best, to best solve that case? So really what we're doing here at ServiceNow is enabling the Air Force and our other DOD customers to leverage a system of action, which really is our strength with our digital workflows to leverage the system of intelligence, so the routing, the machine learning, the artificial intelligence that ServiceNow offers the Air Force. And then finally, that system of frictionless engagement, just like at night when we're, all of us are private citizens and we order an Uber, or we order a Domino's pizza, or you ask something uh, to be shipped from Costco.com. How simple that is from our consumer experience, we are enabling the Air Force to deliver that frictionless experience to its customers through our simple ease of a level of engagement tool set that allows self-service knowledge. We have got virtual agents. All of those tools can help case management be much more streamlined, require less effort from staff, and more productivity. as a result, more productivity will be gained for the Air Force achieving its mission much, much sooner. So there's really three pillars of an enterprise solution that we bring to market. It's our service ex experience where everything that ServiceNow does, Jen mentioned our heritage with ITSM, service management is part of our DNA. So focusing on case management, process automation, integrating with the siloed systems of record or whatever tool sets or people or groups that the case needs to integrate with until it's resolved, that's our strength with our integration tool set. And then of course, not only doing the work, but reporting the work. So how do you show management the value of the tool sets? So data visualization, reporting and metrics, using uh, key performance indicators to measure against, to, to really drive in that value. Predictive intelligence is part of the ServiceNow platform delivering uh, really an enterprise case management solution to the Air Force. So before we turn it over to Eduardo for a demo, I'm gonna walk through this scenario. I think we've got uh, a suspicious, you know, we're gonna talk about a suspicious activity reported on an air base. And so the Air Force needs to act fast to mitigate risk. So on the far left of this slide, if you're able to follow with me, you've got a visitor on base and there's a suspicious activity. They're actually gonna pull out their mobile phone and they're gonna to go to that website for self-service. And they're gonna be able to, you know, to use a portal, a self-service portal, to log a case and to, to create um, a report of a suspicious activity through the help of a virtual agent. So again, that's going to fire off machine learning. It's going to realize, hey, this is this sector of the base and maybe police or fire or ambulance needs to be dispatched. And that's going to fire off digital workflows. Now, granted, I'm walking through this to show, to articulate the workflow, but this is all happening in a few seconds of time from when that visitor reports the incident through the portal. As a result of the digital workflows, a case is opened up and automatically because it's a, maybe it's a car on fire or maybe there's smoke coming from a, a, a trash can or a trash bin, those words are gonna set off the required workflows so that an incident is then opened and enforcement is notified. So mission services can actually fire off the requests or have those requests automatically fired off for emergency support to be dispatched immediately to address the smoke or the fire coming from that uh, fire bin. 
Now, that might also include, because this is a public or a, um, a citizen on an Air Force base, that might include working with other agencies. So you might alert the local firehouse in, uh, in that base location in San Antonio, for instance, that there's a fire. So that's an example of case management. And that's a really good example of the ability to achieve uh, Air Force for, to achieve its mission quicker through good customer workflows from ServiceNow. So with that, I'm gonna turn the microphone over to Eduardo and we're gonna watch a live demonstration of enterprise case management. Eduardo? Yeah, th thank you, Kevin. Uh, yeah, and good morning, everyone. Yeah, th thanks for your time this morning. So as, as Kevin was uh, mentioning, I'm just gonna walk you through an example, a couple examples on how you can leverage the, the ServiceNow platform to help uh, manage those uh, cases, uh, different types of cases. The one, the initial one that we're gonna walk you through is just uh, a report, someone is on a base and, and is reporting a suspicious item. But uh, I'll cover a few other f pieces of functionality on a platform that can also help you manage uh, all sorts of um, case uh, and requests that may involve multiple group, groups, multiple stakeholders, uh, and requires that, that coordination and, and workflow to support those uh, complex case um, case flows. So here, uh, if everyone can see my screen, this is a, our, our customer portal, right? So this is a place where visitors, mission partners, uh, external like vendors can go in and uh, and start looking up information on the services that are provided, looking up some, some knowledge um, or, or getting help on any uh, services or, or requests that, that may need to need to make, they may need to interact with your, your um, organization. So a, a lot of the, our portal uh, is driven by, by search, is driven by knowledge. So here on the, on the top of the portal, we have the search bar here that you can start typing in um, and uh, doing, doing a keyword search, just like it would on Google. And then it's gonna prompt you with a, a list of items, uh, a list of uh, either request forms that you can make, uh, community posts that are that may be similar to what you're looking for, and entries from our knowledge base that may help you um, find out more information, more details about the, the type of request that you're trying to make. So here, if I'm trying to report a, a suspicious item, uh, I can see I, there's a, a request that I can submit. Someone already uh, submitted a post in the community forum about the, the item, it may be the same um, information I was trying to post. And, and a list of knowledge uh, articles that may help you. I mean, and this can be used for, for everything, right? So you could have multiple knowledge bases uh, for, for all sorts of requests, for, from like reporting an item to uh, complex procedures uh, or, or processes that, that your, your mission partners, your vendors need to be aware of and need, need to follow. And all, all of those different uh, knowledge items, uh, they also can subscribe to those knowledge items, uh, rank them, and, and provide feedback on those knowledge items so that they can, um, your, your own organization can, can ensure that you're providing accurate, up-to-date information to your users, and, and they can find what they're looking for. So you can run reports to see where, where are there are gaps in your, in your knowledge. Um, as users uh, view those articles and rank those articles, you can also see here which ones are the most useful and hopefully you're making this easy for users to find easy for them to understand what's um what's what procedures they need to follow how they need to um what they need to do when they're uh, interacting with you with your uh, organization so here if i go back to the main page there are a few other things i wanted to highlight too i mean the, within a community this uh allows you to uh, users to interact with each other. So uh, I'm logged in here as, as Julie Lewis. She's a, a mission partner who um, has signed on to the site. Uh, and this allows you to control what, what she can see on the site. So maybe there's only certain forums, certain uh, items that she can see here. And she can post questions uh, to interact with the Air Force community. So if she belongs to a certain group, to a certain unit, she can uh, collaborate with those users and, and the users can, can help each other, share ideas um, or, or um, try to find out more information from other users. So this helps sometimes deflect a lot of the, the questions that may come otherwise if they didn't have this resource and also uh, makes it easy for people to find information. As, as you build up this community, you, you're gonna build up a, a large amount of, of um, shared knowledge from, from your users that you can 
it's sometimes even move to your to your knowledge base or, or just make it easy for people to find what, what they need. And uh, and also here we have uh, this uh, this get help function, which uh, is our our service catalog. So within this portal, uh, we some of you may be familiar with the service catalog, but this defines the list of services request types that a user uh, can can make. So as I'm logged in as as Julie Lewis to the portal, it's going to show me the, the the services the requests that are available to me. So this is a, can be a personalized view into the, the, the type of requests that are available. And uh, it, it can be configured, can be filtered based on her location, based on her access level. So this here uh, may look very different for, for different mission partners, right? So someone on the East Coast may have a different list of services as someone who's based out of Europe or, or on the West Coast. And, uh, and also, if you have someone that's a, a vendor or an external partner, they may not, may not, not have all of those uh, requests available to them. So all of this is configurable. All of the, the items that you see on this portal, they can all be configurable, uh, customized to look exactly as, as you want. So it's a, a widget-based portal. You can uh, update the look and feel, update the, all the colors, the icons in this portal to match the, your, your existing uh, web portals, your, your existing web, web pages. So now, um, yeah, I just want to highlight a few of the, the cases here. You can see you have a, a number of different support items that, that Julie can submit. Uh, and it can range. It can be like a, a, an IT uh, request uh, to get help with some of her, her, her assets, some of her the products that she owns. Um, can be a proposal for a new project, new requirement that she wants to uh, some share with, with, uh, with your team. Um, she can uh, schedule, a, can use this to schedule appointments or, or on-site visits. So if she needs help with uh, a computer or if she needs help uh, with uh, fixing something on base, she can um, schedule and request for someone to visit. And, and also uh, here, uh, the one we're going to show today is how she can use this tool to report a suspicious item. So here, if I click on reporting suspicious item, it's going to pull up um, a form uh, asking me to submit some, some information about the item. And, and all of the, the fields, the, the data that's collected on the form, it's linked to the request types and it's uh, configurable as well. So if I open up a different request or even if I'm uh, based on my location, I may see different fields on this form. I may have to enter uh, a different set of data that's required to fulfill this request. Users, uh, the mission partners, the, the, the vendors, uh, they're able to submit requests uh, for themselves or on behalf of, of someone else. So uh, in case Julie, maybe she's submitting a request for her commanding officer or someone else in, a, in her organization, she can change uh, who this is submitted as. And this is, this is a filtered list, so it only shows people within her organization. She cannot, or, or people who she's authorized to submit requests on behalf of. So she's not gonna see a full list of everyone uh, on the system. This, uh, based on our, our, our security model, it, it's gonna filter based on her. She's part of the, the Air Force organization and she has the ability to submit requests on, on behalf of those, those people. So uh, that's the, the account data model uh, that's part of CSM that, that gives that, that control, that security level that I can only see requests, cases for my organization. And even within each organization, uh, within, for each mission partner, you can uh, assign spe special roles for, for users. So Julie is an admin, so she can she has additional um, access that she can approve new users to your organization uh, and, and also um, assign different roles to user uh, within your organization. So I'm just going to submit this request as Julie, keep the priority as high. And then here um, is uh, the subject I'm just going to say, please uh, investigate. Uh, so Julie found a, a suspicious. Uh, a briefcase near near the base and uh, near her near her building entrance, and she just wants to to report it. Uh, it may not be anything, but she's been sitting there for a few hours. Uh, someone may have lost it, but she wants to report it and, and get someone to to look at it. So now here I'm going to submit this request, and um, what that's going to do, it's going to create a case uh, in the system. 
So now uh, a case has been created, I uh, have a, my case number. The, the person submitting the request uh, or, or the person the request is assigned to, they're gonna get, they can get an email uh, notifying them that the case has been created uh, and that's the, with the status of the case. And what you see just happened here too. So this case, we have a, a workflow linked to this case that uh, it already assigned this case to a specific team based on the, the request type, based on the, the priority of the case. And uh, it's already getting, we looked at and worked at, and we sent an update to Julie so that she's aware that someone is looking at it. Uh, and anytime Julie can go back to this page, either on the on her desk computer, on her desktop, or look it up on her phone, um, and, and view the the status, view uh, where where the case is, is at. And, and this works for any case in the system. So she has a, a full view of all the cases requests that she's made through this portal, uh, where she can see exactly what's happening, who's working on it, and what's the the latest status uh, on this case as well. Uh, you have the ability, you can submit attachments to this case. So if she, Julie was submitting this via her phone, she can include a picture here as well of the, of the briefcase. So that is, uh, it's very clear to the security officer investigating what's, uh, what's happening. Uh, and, uh, and also she can uh, send updates here as well. So if she uh, wants to ask a question, any updates, uh, this uh, will be sent to the, the agent, to the person working on, on this case. Uh, and then they can communicate back and forth here uh, on the on the status of the case. So next, I was going to show the, the actual the agent view, but I wanted to pause, Jan, if you had anyone had any questions uh, so far. Yes, thank you so much, Eduardo. So there is a question, and they're asking, does the community selection stand alone, or can it integrate with Teams? With, with Microsoft Teams, uh, it's it's standalone. We do have an integration with Teams with uh, or or virtual agent uh, tool. Uh, the, the communities, uh, so so this communities is a, is a standalone community. Um, we, we need to look at exactly what the, the details are on the the team integration. But what we can do with with Teams that that it's a built-in integration is. Um, allow users to submit requests uh, on Teams uh, via like a chat, in a chat format. So they, they can have the, just like we have the virtual agent here, and I, I was gonna show the virtual agent in a, in a little bit, but uh, they can submit requests via Team and get updates on their requests directly from Team via a, a chat interface, leveraging our, our virtual agent uh, framework. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? So all the other questions are being answered by our fabulous team. So right. go ahead and press, Eduardo. Great. So now I'm switching up here uh, to to an agent view. So now I'm logged in as John. Uh, so so John is a is an agent uh, support person who is uh, intaking those those requests uh, that, that are coming in via various channels. So so it can be a, a web request, a request submitted via chat, phone, all of the requests uh, are going to come into to one place and uh, and then you can route them, triage them uh, the way, um, any, any way you want to. So here, um, this view here is the high level view of the, with the dashboard with uh, some key metrics that are uh, important to John. So here you can see the some high priority cases that have been assigned to him, other cases that are uh, assigned to his team, some of his performance metrics, and all of the, the items here are, are configurable. So you can change if you have specific metrics that you want your, your support team to track, to be aware of, you can change all of those different components, those different uh, widgets on this dashboard to, uh, to reflect the, your, 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 the metrics uh, for your team. So he also has the ability to look at lists of requests. So here he can, you can see a list of all the, the different cases that, that have been open. Uh, and if I refresh this, it's uh, gonna show me the, the one that we just submitted for, for Julie. And he can have different filters on this case. So he can have the, he can filter by, by open cases, cases that have been assigned to him or, or cases that haven't been assigned to, to anyone. The next screen here, uh, this shows the, John's um, his inbox. So in his inbox, one of the things that John can do is set his own status. So what that allows the system to do is be aware of the, the availability of each support agent uh, on your team. So if they are um, already on a call or already working on, on, a, on a chat, you're not going to route 
additional questions, additional requests to, to, to John, right? You're gonna um, just typically an agent can only take one call at a time or, or two or three chats at a time. If he already is exceeding his capacity, you're gonna see who's the next available person, the next the best available support agent based on their, their skill set, availability, availability, and uh, affinity with the request. So, and what affinity means is that uh, if someone is uh, typically supports the, uh, a specific base, a specific mission partner, you can uh, set up rules that, that will try to route those requests to that uh, agent first because they're familiar with that, with that account, with that, that partner or vendor. Uh, but if they're not available, you can you can send it to the the next best person. So you can have very um, complex rules that that allow you to to do that that routing based not only on availability and skill set, but also the, their affinity with uh, accounts and 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 locations and, and users. So here you can see this popped up here on my screen. So this case was the one I just submitted. Uh, I'm going to accept this case, and it's going to pop up the case on my my screen here. And uh, as part of this case, um, you can see there is a, here on top, I can see the, the details about, about Julie. So I can see what her role is, what her, uh, which organization she belongs to, timelines for the case and the, and the priority. So here I can see the details that, that Julie entered on the, on the form. Um, and also one of the things that happened when I started this case, it has automatically assigned an SLA based on the type of request and also based on, you can also have SLAs based on the, the mission partner or, or vendor who's submitting the request. So you may have different um, SLA requirements for each, each vendor, for each mission partner. And, and that can all, all, all be driven based on that initial request from that service catalog. So each, each vendor, maybe some of them have a 20, some requests have a 24 hour resolution period others you may have um, a week to, to resolve. And all, all of that can be driven from that initial request. If I go back here to the case, so I'm gonna just sub change the priority of this case uh, and, and save it. Uh, one of the things that can that will happen here now is uh, it's gonna update the SLA, right? So since I changed this to critical, now the SLA is, uh, is you have an eight hour SLA and, uh, and you can start keeping track of all the time that, that uh, the case is taking to, to be resolved. Um, if I, uh, just to highlight some of the, the account features that, that come with, uh, with the CSM tool, is uh, if I click on the, the, the USAF um, account, uh, and then that Julie is, the, is part of, I can see all of the details, uh, the full history of that, that, uh, that account or, or, or mission partner. So I can see all the, the details on who's the, the primary person for, the, for that account. I can look at other contact on contacts for that account. So I can see every, all the, the different members, uh, people who are associated with that account that I may need to, to engage to resolve the request. I can view a list of all the open cases uh, linked to that account. So this gives me a history, right? If, uh, when I, if a certain mission partner, a certain group is having similar issues, similar cases, uh, th there may be a bigger problem that I need to go and, and look at and, and investigate. And also look at a list of assets, products that are, are linked to that account. So if you have um, services or, or products that, that some mission partners may be using, leveraging, you can view uh, all of those different assets that they have. Uh, and in case you need to support, you need to help uh, maintain some of, those, some of those assets. And also within the account, uh, you, you are able to build an account hierarchy structure. So here at the top level, we have the, the USAF, but then you can have different bases at the lower level. And all of this is, is configurable um, any way you want to, but it, it allows you to filter down those contacts and cases based on, on where you are in this account hierarchy. So someone here who's uh, at the, at the sub-level in this hierarchy may, will not have visibility on, into the top level account, but someone has, at the, the, this level can see cases and see contacts uh, at the lower um, sub-accounts. Now uh, I'm going to go back to the, the main case here, and uh, so one of the, so once Julie submitted this case, so we, we identified that this case is a pretty high priority case. Someone uh, we need to dispatch someone from the security team to work on this right away. One of the things that happened as part of that workflow is that we we automatically created a work order and associated it with this case. 
And what a work order allows it to do is to, to dispatch uh, uh, someone from your security team or, or technician, someone to actually go on site and look at this, uh, this incident. So here, um, we, this work order was um, automatically created. Uh, we already filled in some information. We picked a, 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 a work order template, which defines all the different tasks and SLAs that are associated with work, work orders of, of this type. And um, all of this was automatically created. So save a, a lot of manual work that typically requires someone to go in and, and create the new work order, assign it to a team, uh, look up who's available. All of this uh, has, has been done already. And uh, what John can do here is just click here and say, it's ready for dispatch. And that's gonna send it over, uh, say that this has been reviewed, that uh, it needs to be, someone needs to look at it. And it sends over to, to the, the appropriate team who can handle those types of uh, requests, those types of uh, incidents. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, the one, one thing I wanted to highlight too, see that on the, the right side here on my screen, you can see there's a, a list of knowledge items and, and also cases that are related to this uh, request. So we call this uh, the Asian Assist tool. And, and what it does is it allows um, us to, to show the, uh, the agent or the person who's working on some of those incidents, similar cases, similar requests that may help them solve this request. So if I already have someone else reporting uh, the same issue, you can open up that case, you can view what, uh, see if this is the same issue or a similar one and either provide the same, can save you time because it, the, you can provide the same resolution or create a major case, combine both cases and just have to do the work one time instead of having to answer each individual request uh, individually. All right, uh, Jen, were there any other questions on, on QA at this time? There are none that are unanswered, so continue on. All right, All right great. So uh, now I created a case, uh, I created a work order, and the uh, next step that I wanted to show you is uh, how um, someone on this on a dispatch team that needs to that is seeing those work orders can can receive those those requests and um, and answers those requests. So here I'm looking at the, a dispatch map that shows me the location of all my either the security officers or, or technicians who are uh, available to work on those requests. So here I can see that uh, you have those little icons here. Those are the different technicians, so Teddy and, and Ray, those are shows you the lo re real-time location where those technicians are. And also uh, it shows me the open requests, open work orders based on their location. So here I can see uh, I have a number of uh, work order tasks on this, uh, on this location here. One of them, someone's already working on it. A, a lot of them still need to be to be dispatched. And um, so this just gives me a, a quick view on where um, all my personnel is, like for a security team, for example, where, where they're located, what, what they're doing, uh, and helps me quickly assign um, tasks to them uh, and, and make sure that they are, uh, I'm picking up someone who's close to the incident, close to the location, and has the, the right skill set to to respond to the issue. We also have this uh, dispatch tool here that allows you to see the, all the, the different open requests. And, and, and definitely when a request comes in, um, we have the ability to automatically assign it to the best person, right? So you don't want to reduce that manual work. You don't want someone having to manually assign those requests to a person. So we can look at things like proximity to the, the, the reported, uh, to the report or their schedule and availability and try to automatically assign. But here's the, the suspicious item that was reported. So if I select that one, it's gonna show me which technicians have matching skills. And, and if this was like a, a repair job, you can show me also the mat if he has parts that are, uh, he has parts that are available to support the request and uh, allows me to select who's, who the best person is to, to fulfill that request. So here I can open up the details of that work order task and see uh, what, what exactly uh, needs to be done. Um, I can select auto assign, and this is gonna try to pick the best person. So here it says that Teddy has some time available, he's nearby, and uh, he may be the best person to, to support this request. So this is part of the or, or field service tool functionality that helps you assign, deploy those field requests, field workers to work on, on some of those um, 
request jobs. Um, and, and it can be used for a lot more than just um, break, fix, uh, or type scenarios, right? It can be used for scheduling appointments if someone needs to have a, an appointment for a security clearance uh, review or, or, or something like that. You can use this tool as well to, to help with, um, with managing those, those appointments, those requests, and, uh, and keep track of all those requests and assign them to different people within your group. Okay, so um, any questions, Jen? Or should I... okay, no, there aren't right now. So now, um, yeah, so we, I covered the, the suspicious case. Uh, the one thing I, I wanted to show as well is the ability to, to manage projects with those mission partners with, uh, or, or external vendors. So within the, or, or customer portal, uh, you have the, the ability. So if you're using, uh, leveraging some of our ITBM project management functionality to support, to manage your projects, to manage uh, your, your portfolio, you, you can uh, expose some of those tasks to the, on the portal to your um, vendors and, and mission partners. So here I, I have a project here that it's um, for, for site uh, network installation. I can look up all the details on this project uh, and this project, uh, many of the stakeholders are, are external to my organization. So I have Julie is one of the, the stakeholders, uh, Peter and Cindy are other stakeholders. And uh, they, I still need to communicate with them, right? And a lot of times that, that back and forth communication happens via, they happen via email or, or some other tool, and it's difficult to keep track of, of all of the, the different messages and different requests. Uh, and also if the contacts change over time, which happen, um, happen a lot, it, it, there needs to be a transition, right? All the, the information that was contained, stored in emails, sometimes it's lost or, or it's difficult to find if people change in the project. So this gives you the ability to create tasks and cases. Uh, and assign those tasks and cases uh, directly to the, the, the external stakeholders to some of those mission partners. So here, if you need to send out, out regular status report updates, or if you need to get sign off on some of the, the requirements, some of the um, sign, uh, steps in, a, in, your, in your project, uh, you can create cases or you can create project tasks and assign them to, the, to those external users. So here we have uh, some, Julie created a case. She's actually having some issues viewing some of the status reports. Uh, so, so she can communicate, view those updates via that portal. So even though she's not internal in your organization, she still has access to uh, some of the, the items, some of the tasks uh, on that project that are uh, important to her, that, that, are, that are relevant to her. And um, so I was going to switch to the, the portal view again. And then I, if I go back here, so I'm logged in as Julie. So if I go back here and just look at the projects list. So Julie, since, since she's a member of this uh, site 10 network installation project, uh, she, can, she has some visibility into that project details. So she can pull up that project. She can open up the details, see all of the different tasks uh, on the project that have been um, made visible to her based on her role in her access level. And, uh, and for some of those pro uh, project tasks, she may need to take some action on it, right? So here, they're looking for, for a sign off from the, the customer. She can uh, review the task. Uh, she can send updates to the, the, maybe the project manager or the, the SME who's working on this task. And, uh, and at the end, she can sign off on this, uh, on this task, right? So she can say this is, uh, this is closed or she's, she's completed her task. So this is also an easy way for you to, to manage that communication between your, your internal PPM project management group and external stakeholders uh, where they can see what they need uh, and you can assign tasks, you can assign um, cases to, the, to their projects and uh, keep track of all the communication via, via this portal. And uh, the, the final thing I wanted to show was uh, just a quick view here. We talked a little bit about the virtual agent, but uh, the, the virtual agent uh, allows you to, to create different conversation flows to help you with um, a lot of the, the, the common questions uh, and, and requests that, that users are making. So, I mean, a lot of times users just want to know where, what's happening to one of their cases, what happened, uh, what's 
is anyone working on it? So here, if Julie wanted to see, just uh, get an update on her, um, on, on the request, she, she just submitted. Uh, she can look up the list of her cases. She can look up the list of uh, her, her request. And, uh, and it would show her right away here, the, the status is still open, still um, a critical request. And she can add additional details. So all of this can be done without any interaction with any um, support uh, agent or, or or security team, uh, it can all, always be done automatically and capture in the system. And from a from a cell phone or, or desktop, she can add comments, uh, attach a picture, or even contact a live agent. So if she wants to initiate a live conversation here, this time she needs help right away. She can escalate this and, and start talking to a live agent at this point. So the virtual agent is a great tool to to help deflect a lot of those uh, simple questions that that users have. Uh, and you can even have add some complex, more uh, complex flows here. You users can create a case. I could have created this uh, superficial object case from the virtual agent as well uh, and, and walk them through the, the step, the processes for creating that case. So uh, some users prefer using that, that interface. They prefer that, that conversational UI where you walk them, to ask a bunch, a few questions and walk them through the process. Uh, but it's up to it's up to the user to pick. They can submit the request via the web. They can call in, or they can um, use this agent to submit the request. So really giving them the choice to to use their preferred channel, their preferred communication method, to make it easy for them to submit all of those requests. And I, as I mentioned before, this can be integrated into Teams, so they can have the same experience with a virtual agent within Microsoft Teams as well. Jen, uh, questions? I was just going to show uh, had some reporting tools that I had to, I wanted to show here before we um, finish the demo. But if anyone had yeah. any questions, please, please. There are no questions. We got about 10 minutes left. So right. um, I'll let you go ahead and keep going. And uh, I know that Kevin wanted to speak for a couple more minutes after that. Um, and then, oh, actually, there's a question that just came in from Beth. She just asked, can the map function be tied to asset management, IT business management, and security operations? Yes, I mean, within the, the map function, uh, yeah, so there, there, there are a few questions in there. Um, the, the, the mapping, the dispatch function, so within the, the field service tool, uh, we can tie in to the asset inventory management. So once you dispatch, uh, like for example, if, if you have a, a job that, that needs to be performed, um, we can check to see if parts are available or where, like if you have like warehouses, storage places, uh, where those parts are and uh, and help the, the technician make sure that they, they have the right parts, they can do the job right the first time, right? So a lot of times things, something that happens a lot is that technician doesn't have the, the right tools, it didn't bring the right part, didn't know what, what was needed. Within the, the system, we can help uh, based on the type of request, we can ensure that we tell the technician, those are the parts you likely need. And if he doesn't have that in his personal inventory, we can also show where, where it is, uh, where the closest part is to, to the technician. Um, Eduardo, really quick, I just wanted to piggyback off of Eduardo's answer. Um, the, the mapping functionality is a co-platform feature, uh, so that could be leveraged by any application across ServiceNow. So whether it's CSM that you're seeing right now, customer support management, customer service management rather, asset management, security operations, pretty much anything across the platform. Over. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, yes. No. Yeah. And that's what I was yeah. It's, we can embed and, and even use uh yeah we show google we can use we have integrated with esri with other mapping tools as well so it's uh very flexible on what what you can do with the with the mapping tool um yeah so here uh yeah since we only have a few minutes left i was gonna run do a quick review of some of the reporting tools so all of the the data that's captured in the system that that it's collected it's available via reporting and dashboards and we have hundreds of reports that come out of the box uh, that you can either leverage them as is or, or modify it to show your own metrics. So here, let's have a, one showing some, some trends in your, in your services so that you can identify any issues with the uh, missed SLAs or, or high volumes for, for a certain channel. Um, you can look at uh, other like customer, you can send out customer surveys and, and 
track like the satisfaction for emission partners and, and trying to identify when things are, are, are not going as they, they should. And, um, and also that you can have some real time reporting too on the, this, um, the operations dashboard. So you can see how many agents you have available. So if you're running a, a call center support center, you can see who's, who's available for, for requests, how many work items you have in your queue. And, uh, and if there's any, I can find any trends on like you have a, a large number of certain types of cases, certain types of requests that are coming in that may um, point to a larger, larger issue. Okay. All right, that's, that's all I had uh, for today. No, again, thank, thank you for your time. I mean, if uh, Jen, if you had any other questions, but I'll, I'll let Kevin um, show, show a few use cases now. Eduardo, yeah, thank we'll, you. We'll pass it on to Kevin for right now. Thank you. Eduardo, thanks for walking us through the demo for the scenario we talked about for reporting a suspicious activity. I also was really charged up watching you demonstrate the ability of case management that includes projects because so often, you know, case management means something different to everyone. And I see all of the attendees, 34 of them, uh, Mike and Taz and Teresa and Luke, you might have different ideas about what case management is, but what the goal of this presentation is to show you that uh, ServiceNow has the capabilities, regardless of the requirements of the case, to help you track, manage, collect, and actually resolve that case very, very quickly. We move now into other use cases that other federal partners and customers have deployed um, around the Beltway and around the globe. This one in particular um, is really about vendor supply management. So, oops, the slide went up forward. Uh, vendor supply management, this um, federal agency had zero visibility into downstream supplier delays, and that created issues with meeting service level agreements, which resulted in penalties. So. Communication back uh, before ServiceNow was very inefficient with back and forth emails, telephone calls, and really no real-time visibility into the status of their customers and their vendors. So this agency deployed uh, CSM for case management, much like we're talking about today. And as a result, they improved the resolution times on supplier-based issues. They have uh, streamlined workflows and they've used the service portal that Eduardo demonstrated to provide you know, visibility into the status of requests so that uh, end users can see real-time details of their requests and then make decisions based upon those details. They also like the out-of-the-box data tables that allowed management to report back to um, users about their reporting uh, success and as a result this customer is set to have a cost benefit of $19 million over the next five years. So lastly, this, the last use case I wanted to talk about was really an enterprise uh, case management for consolidation of various help desks. So this is a very large um, DOD customer and they had disconnected help desks with disconnected systems. And they turned to ServiceNow to collaborate and to consolidate all of these tools into one tool set. So, they're using customer service management, case management that you're watching today, all of the things that we learned about and more. And by offering a one uh, platform tool set, Jen mentioned one, one database, one architecture, one platform, this agency is able to uh, pr consolidate, provide streamline of operations, and actually triage tier zero requests much more quicker because end users can now solve the majority of the cases themselves, therefore deflecting uh, the cases uh, before they even are started. Um, <clears throat> there we go. Um, and they've taken an enterprise case management approach to consolidating those multiple help desks while um, opening up a different available cases for humans to focus on um, in, their, in their steps in their desk every day. These slides like to walk themselves. So I, you know, this is the conclusion of our presentation. Jen, Gain, Eduardo, all of us here at ServiceNow are here to answer your questions. I invite you to take down my phone number or email address if you have questions around case management or reach out to any of us here at uh, ServiceNow. We're excited to work with you. Jen, I'll swing it back to you for any final questions. Yeah, so we do have a question from Luke. He's asking, can CSM be implemented by project office, then at a later date be aggregated to an enterprise instance without huge reconfiguration costs? Uh, 
So unless, uh, Shawnee, did you want to jump on that and, and speak to that? Or did you want us to answer that? Yeah, we'd love for you to answer that. So one of the nice things, Jen, about um, ServiceNow, especially CSM, is I always tell customers to take the, the crawl, walk, run approach. There is no need to go out of the gate at 100 miles an hour. You can start today with one project office and then as business needs evolve and as success and confidence in the tool set grows, customers can expand from the shallow end of the pool, down to the middle end of the pool, down to the deep end. So that in the future, there is expansion of um, leveraging one tool set and a consolidation of vendors supporting the Air Force. So absolutely great question by Luke. Awesome, thank you. And then um, I think with that, unless we have any other questions, we can go ahead and give everybody a couple minutes back to their day. Um, we're, we're just thankful that you guys were here. We also have um, another session um, next week. So it's at 11 o'clock and it's going to be covering um, the app engine. So if you guys are interested in joining us for that a webinar next week, please come on back and join us. And with that, we are going to give you guys some time back. Have a great day, everyone.